So after a really bad start, I got to thinking, am I going to miss out on this whole season? Or maybe, could organic fertilizer help my broccoli grow? <laughs> Happy Holidays! Merry Christmas! We are in the middle, well, more like the beginning of winter season. And for us here in Florida, this is one of the best times of year to start your vegetable gardens, especially for your cold vegetables. Cold weather vegetables? Yeah, those ones. Things like your onions and broccolis. And yeah, last time we checked in on this, you know, things weren't really going to plan. Things were just kind of no, 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 no. And so I had to think, I was thinking a lot because I'm like, am I gonna lose this whole winter season? And there was a lot of stuff happening in life at the same time. So it would have been totally okay if you, like me, were like, there's just too much going on. I need to take a pause in the vegetable garden. But I didn't wanna lose the entire season. So I was trying to figure out how could I turn this around? And what was really cool is some coworkers went and they got me a gift card to Lowe's. And so I had money to spend on plants. And so I thought, you know what? I'm turning this around. I am not going to take defeat this winter. We are gonna dive in. We're gonna change some things up. So let's go look and see what happened. I am just loving how this is looking. Who wants to decorate their vegetable garden? So you remember, it was not that long ago, six weeks ago, this was looking mighty, mighty sad. We'd just been hit by, I think it was a tropical storm, maybe a cat one, hurricane. So a lot of plants, not so happy. And then we went into, straight into a bunch of cold fronts, which generally things we grow here in Florida, not doing so great. So you'll remember in the late fall vegetable garden tour that this was looking very sad. Remember, the soil was pretty bare. I had some animal, I think it was either a armadillo or a rabbit eating all the corn that was in the bed. And then we went and replanted it with some broccoli and cauliflower and some beets. And this, it just, it wasn't doing well, right? Because we put some organic soil on top of, you know, this mulch, not very deep. And the root systems just didn't have access to the nutrition. So I started to think, well, I'll just wait till late winter and I'll reset the bed then. I'll have maybe more enough compost to do something different. And then, and then, my birthday went by and some of my coworkers got me a gift card to Lowe's so I could go and buy some plants because, <laughs> you know, I'm the gardening lady at work. And that got me thinking, am I going to give up? Am I going to sit here and not take advantage of the rest of this season? No, we are not doing that. And so, I got to thinking, how can I turn this around really quickly? But of course, because we're going to eat this food, I didn't want to do it where you know it wasn't organic but you know you know, there's always that tricky part of like things that are organic still might have something synthetic i don't know it gets kind of weird sometimes like is it all organic or just mostly organic so it kind of leaves a dilemma and then i found this so i'm gonna show you what i use so a couple things to do a quick turnaround the first i got i feel like this is like a curse word here in florida i got some miracle grow <laughs> so this is miracle Grow Performance Organics All-Purpose in Ground Soil. So it's supposed to be organic. It's allegedly supposed to give me two times the bounty. And it's organic and natural ingredients. And this is where stuff where, if you're gonna buy things, this is where things kind of get questionable at times because it's like, why is it organic and natural? What does that mean? Is this a regulated term? Sometimes they are regulated, sometimes they're not. But I was being impulsive. I had a gift card, I was like, yes but it's blended with some aged compost. That's a good thing. And it feeds up to three months, so that's exciting. So I grabbed that. Now the thing is, is one bag of this costs about 10 bucks, which means if you're gonna do a whole giant garden like this, this is gonna get expensive really, really fast. So this bed right here was about, oh, I don't know, three and a half by eight or nine feet long. And according to that, that would have put us at, I don't know, I mean, it would have said, I think it was, wait, let's do that math together, 24. So it would have said five bags for this little section right here. I did four bags. Now, how did I do it? 
I did mounds. Can you see that these are mounds? Maybe not. Let's see if I can go this angle. Maybe you'll see that these are mounds. There you go. See? Mound, dip, mound. So this is where the original soil was. And then I basically did, well, my husband helped, a bag, and then a bag, and then a bag, and then a bag. And that got four bags right there. And then, because I had that gift card, I had not used all my money yet, they had transplants that were like six plants for $3. So I got six broccolis for here and six broccolis for here. And then these extra ones, these were sad, sad little ones that were still alive, but big enough for me to find them. And so I put them here that I transplanted them out and I said, good luck, hope you live. And they did. So I think these are looking pretty good. So these ones, I mean, these are getting huge. So you can see the size. This is even my biggest one. This is one of my transplants. Now, this is why I said, I'm not sure if these are cauliflower or broccoli because I had both types of seeds. And of course I didn't label anything because you know, why would I label things? Look at this one, look how big that is. That's my hand. I've got regular size hands. I do not have small hands or large hands. So I guess if you want that for perspective, my hand. But look, these are doing great. Oh, and then on top of the soil, I added something else. I added a all-purpose feeder. This is shaken feed. Also contains natural ingredients, kelp, earthworm castings, feather meal, and bone meal. So I sprinkled this on top too. And then you're supposed to reapply it every two months. This whole thing was only $10. And it, when you do your sprinkle, honestly, you don't use that much. So this seems like it would last a while. So I'm trying it. Tell me your guys' opinions. Do you think this is bad for Florida? Do you think this is okay? Do you think this stuff is effective? Let me know in the comments. So I'm trying it. We're trying it. I don't think it makes sense to buy this every season because honestly, because um, honestly that's gonna get really expensive really fast, but for kind of a quick start, turnaround, I felt okay about it. And then, let's see. So now I just wanted to give you, okay, let's give the, the wide shot. The sexy, sexy broccoli shot. I feel like they look good and then the middle there you got green onions so these some of these ones these smaller ones these were actually green onions that grew from the seeds from my green onions I had over there these are from those seeds so half of these are that and the other half was we just wanted green onion soup and I didn't have enough green onions so we bought some more green onions and bam the other reason I did this um, besides wanting to have an increased supply of green onions for soup was that um, you know, the rabbit, the armadillo, I wanted to kind of give something in there to deter them so maybe they get a nip of that before they go and eat the broccoli. And honestly, look, no damage to the broccoli. I've got no pest, no pests, even with leaves on the ground. And these ones are looking great. These are the ones that I replanted. So I'm excited for this bed. This seems like it's doing really, really well. So we'll see what happens throughout the winter. Being that we're just a few weeks in and I've not grown broccoli before, I mean, honestly, the fertilizer soil results seem pretty good. I mean, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Oh, and if you're wondering, these are Lieutenant Broccolis by Bonnie. But I think that's enough about that bed. Let's go check out what's going on in the other bed. So I did a similar thing in the middle bed. So if you remember this bed, had the onions, garlic, and then peppers in the middle, and then there was some little residual other things that were not happy. And then of course our eggplants. So let's talk about how they're doing. So I think this center bed is doing very well. Yes, I do. So we still have onions growing from onion scraps. They're all in there. So those continue to do really well. So that's going. And then my first foray into garlic, look at this garlic. It looks super happy. So I've done nothing on this section except I added that miracle Grow fertilizer sprinkle. It's like sprinkles. <laughs> it really was like sprinkles. Um, so I added a little bit of that on top. And so far, so good. And then I've got a couple peppers that have survived. They were not happy overall. Um, one, same reason with the soil problem. And then two, because of what was going on with the eggplants, which we'll talk about in a second. But let's go further back. Whee. So similar to what I did with the 
other bed, I added some soil. I think this is only two bags. One, two, or maybe it was three. I can't remember. I don't think it was four bags because it's just not mounted as high. And then because I still have money left on the gift card, I did buy these transplants again. You know, generally I don't like to buy transplants. It's just way too much money. But you know, when you got a gift card, what you gonna do? So I thought, well, I really wanted pepper. So I bought this type by Bonnie again, but they have those, those pots that break down and just become soiled. So those are kind of cool. So I just figured I'd try them out. So one's a yellow bell pepper and the other one is a red sweet bell. And look at this, already, even in winter, we got some peppers growing. So that is super exciting. And then behind it, I thought I would do lettuce. And the lettuce needs to be thinned out. I know, <laughs> I haven't done it yet. Um, actually, I was just gonna shoot this video and then go thin it out. So I thought it looked prettier. And then once it's thinned out, it won't be quite, you know, there'll be more space and we'll come check in in a few weeks. So you'll get to see it once it's a little bit further along. So this one is romaine lettuce and it looks so good. And then the one that's taking off, oh my gosh, it's almost like a carpet. Look at this, look at this. This is a butter crunch lettuce, which I'm super excited for. And these are doing great. And in the middle, kind of same idea as the broccoli where we kind of have two little mounds trying to maximize depth to recover from the problems with the mulch not being broken down yet, is we've got some ahise peppers, I think, are these ones in the middle. So they're still growing. So once it starts to warm up come January, February more, because honestly, this has been a really cold winter for us. Unusually cold. I know, if you're in the north, you're laughing, you're going like, seriously, it got down to like 40 for two days. That's not normal, we usually get it for one day, and most of the time they come in January, so it's been really weird that it's come in December. Okay, so let's talk about the eggplants. The eggplants have continued to grow. This is not the time of year for them. So was I hoping for some fruits or vegetables? Yes. Did I get any? No. It continues to flower, it, but it has not. Now we've really hit the cold months and I think you can really see that in some of the spotting that you get on it. Let me show you. It's just made it more, and we're getting more moths and things that we see. There's definitely some moth caterpillars eating away at this thing. And I'm not mad about it, but this is what I was talking about with the peppers, is that usually if they eat a nightshade plant, like an eggplant, they'll probably eat a pepper plant and a tomato plant too. So I think some of my baby peppers that were doing okay in there got eaten up, but that's okay. I'll leave them. So I've been seeing some moths hanging around here, but we've been continuing to get flowers. Not right now, not since the cold snaps but generally it's been getting flowers. So you can see cold, it was not happy in the cold. That's okay. So now let's talk about the arches. One, I love how they've been decorated. I love the lights. I love the little fun firework light thing. I love our deer. I love how we have ornaments hanging out over here and more ornaments back there and just lots of it's, it's gorgeous, it's a winter wonderland. And if you wanna see how we decorate it, go ahead and check out the video. But honestly, this was, I love it. Now, while the other beds had some really good turnaround, the arches have kind of meh. But there are ones that are doing great. Look at this. These ones, now this space, let me show you, let me step back so you guys see. This part of the arch had the least amount of mulch before we went to ground than some of the other areas, which means more likely that the plant was able to get to the dirt that was happy below it. And that has led from them looking very sad to all of a sudden just taking off. I think this one's one of the best ones right here. Look at this. Bam. Oh, pink flowers. You see that? Pink flowers, oh, so pretty. Look how thing, look at it, 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 oh my gosh, I didn't even realize it went that high. This is doing exactly what I was hoping it would do. I am so excited for this. Most of it, no. But I think we're in a spot where I'm gonna, re I'm just gonna leave this for right now, but come right after the new year, once we get back into our warm crop season, 
I'm gonna reset these arches. So I'll pull what isn't happy and I will transplant things that I think maybe have a chance. But otherwise, we're just gonna, we're just gonna reset it. We'll put some good soil back down. We'll put some fertilizer down and we'll see if we can make something of it. But generally, I mean, look at this. I think this is from the original, original. <laughs> but it's still, look at that. Come on, focus. There we go. Still got little baby beans. That's cute. Oh, I didn't even realize. I was saying you were so sad. And yet, you have a bean too. These are baby pumpkins from Halloween. I'm just letting them rot right there. Flowers. So they do have flowers. This is really not making the level of bean production that I want or need. But still, you know, it's doing something. It really is. So they are doing something. They're just... These tomatoes... Oh, I did a thing. I did put some of the soil up against this just to see if like, they would perk up and maybe go. Sort of, but weeds. And weeds. Yes. Let's go look at the other side of the arches. And even here, look, a lot of these ones have beans. 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 Actually, this one's got like three, four beans. And I figured I was gonna have to reset these a bit anyways. Can you see these actually have beans? Because we're gonna have to get the lights off of them. We're not planning on leaving the lights up all year, so, you know. Because I really, really wanna get a big tomato crop come, which will start those like January, probably February. I think for my area. Let's go the other side. Beans, beans. And I have a pretty good idea of how big these should be because the food forest, I also planted these beans and they're doing way better over there. So here are our tropicals. They're still doing great. Look at this papaya. Look at this papaya. It's huge. Bananas still doing great. Banana. They're a little less happy because it's cold out, but they're doing okay. Ornaments let's talk about over here. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? That's a gold fritillary. They've been hanging out here a little bit more. Actually, I expect to see a ton come spring. There are so many caterpillars over there, over in the native portion. They're crazy. There's crazy how many there are. So if you remember, um, I think it was some point in fall, we went and harvested this whole section. So we already got sweet potatoes coming up. So you've got, those are all sweet potatoes coming back in. Of course, we've got our native fire bush. Look at that. Look how huge this native fire bush is. It's huge. So happy. Hi, Gold Fritillary. And then here, all the way back up front. This, I think we did it in the summer, maybe early fall. I really cannot remember when we expanded this area. I cut back the leaves. It's looking very sad. The sweet potatoes, remember, are a tropical plant. They do not like the cold. So the mature leaves are just looking very sad at the moment. I then, because we do eat the sweet potato greens now, yes we do, but when they're older and mature, they tend to get hit by the white flies a lot more easily. And then the white flies are there and you gotta do a lot to get them off. Lost soaking, and then of course that brings in, we have um, some predatory stink bugs that are coming in too. So there's a lot more washing to try to get them clean and ready to be eaten. So I was knocking back the leaves just to try to one, curb our uh, white fly population, which the cold also helped up with that, but encourage more of the little leaves because the little leaves really don't get attacked as much. And these are not, how to say, as fibery, I guess would be the word, when you're eating them. Sometimes when you get one of the bigger leaves and you go to chew it, it's just, it can be a bit much. And then as I was cutting it back, I started to realize that some of these areas are ready to harvest, <laughs> which is why I started to think back, when did I plant this area? Because should it be? Like right here, this looks normal. Let me see if I bring it down. This is how you can tell. So a lot of people, right, they ask, how do you know when to harvest sweet potatoes? And the answer, if you live up north, is when the leaves die. But here, the leaves, I mean, other than when you get a cold snap, we really don't ever die. So when do you do it? And here's the answer. Let me see if I can find one. So you notice it was really flat where I showed you that insertion point. But look here. Can you tell? I don't know if this comes on camera as much. Do you see how this kind of, kind of makes like a mound? You'll start to notice these mounds. And da 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 da. 
Uh, ta -da. And that is how you know your sweet potatoes are ready. Is you'll just, they actually start to mound up. And this doesn't mean this is the only sweet potato in the area. It's just when they start to perk up. Oh, look right here. Can you see these? When they start to perk up like that, that means there's a whole cluster you see under there. Can you guys see these? I don't know if you can see these. You see this? They're just coming up. So if I start to pull these, and I've been experimenting, and the other reason I wanted to knock these back is because I wanted to experiment because I've, I've heard that if they just focus on growing vines, the tubers don't get as big, and I just wanted to make sure, I just wanted to try it, because I really don't tend to knock them back as much. We basically let them grow, harvest, let them grow, harvest. So I wanted to see if we are pruning the leaves more. One, we're already doing that because we're using it in the smoothies and we're using it um, in salads, but if we did it more often, one, to keep down that, that white fly population, and would we get bigger tubers? I mean, that's a pretty decent size. Let's see. And this is, if you just know, I just roll these up, and then this part was actually on top of grass. Oh, look at this, look at this. Ugh, not prepared for this, clearly. <laughs> it's like, and there you go, another tuber. That's bigger. So these are white yams, or white sweet potatoes. There's a lot of different colors. They aren't all just what you are used to seeing. So this, um, this white sweet potato, it tastes more like a potato than it does what you usually think of when you eat a sweet potato. And so the thought was is that use these in the green onion soup. So use this with those, and voila, more food coming out of the yard. This is super cool. I'm so excited that this is already happening. I wonder if there's any more. I don't want to do Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Who is this right here? Who is this right here? Are we harvesting sweet potatoes? Unplanned harvest of sweet potatoes. And this looks like it's more of the orangey type. So you got that. You can see the difference. Look at that. So if you're ever going to do that, you can have different types all together. There really isn't any reason. Just let them, let them mix. Create diversity. It doesn't really change anything about either of them. But these look very happy. I, I didn't even know I was planning on harvesting. I might end up harvesting this whole area in a few minutes after I'm done filming. So that might be a thing we're doing. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about, because I didn't mention this when we harvested this area last season, but you might notice something else growing in here. Do you see this? Do you see that? Do you see these? Do you know what those are? That's right, native to the Americas, these are sunflowers. Our neighbors, when we grew these in the winter last year into the spring, people loved these. People were super excited about this. So we had kept a lot of seeds. We were originally going to try to process them to make sunflower seeds, but honestly it just seemed like a lot of work. So instead, I'm super excited to try this. Tell me if you've ever tried this. I saw a video by, I think it was Baker's Creek, where you eat the heads like corn. Like you just, you, you grill them, <laughs> season them, and you just eat them. Looks kind of complicated with the, how to bite into it, but I can see it now that I've grown my own sunflowers, I'm really excited to try this. So these are sunflowers. There are more seeds all around, um, but like you can see right here, a lot of them are just sitting up on top. And a lot of these didn't actually get fertilized so they're empty but what I've been trying to do is kind of kick up because one I think birds ate some and two a lot of them are just on top so I've been trying to kind of ruffle them around okay and then here you can see lots of young sweet potatoes these have been great for harvesting harvest 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 so hopefully we get two birds faster that you know sweet potatoes bring big big pounds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we're wrapping up the holiday season and heading into the middle of winter, I hope that your vegetable gardens, your food forests, everything is producing just pounds and pounds of food. Which reminds me, we're coming up on New Year's and at the beginning of this year, I committed to trying to grow 250 pounds. So on New Year's Day, I'm gonna be going over one, how many pounds of food was I able to grow in my yard? 
to what plants deliver the most pounds, what save the most money, what had, you know, honorable mentions, unexpected results, things I want to do differently and that I think you should too. So make sure you don't miss it. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. New videos each week on Friday and sometimes a bonus on Sunday. And if you want to support the mission of this channel, go ahead and click the join button down below. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.